Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, hi. So today I have, of course, a reaction video for you and we are looking at the wonderful world of TikTok. It's a very strange place, TikTok. It's a very, um, you can go like down different avenues. Some of them quite scary and weird. Some of them kind of a little bit fun. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have a look at that kind of like beauty avenue today. <laughs> Here's what I wanna say about the like hacks and things like that that we see on TikTok and online in general. And if you watch my videos often, then you'll you'll see I would have said this quite a few times. Take it with a pinch of salt. It's, it's almost like entertainment purposes. Don't forget that a lot of people online are trying to make viral content that is eye catching and to the point and very quick. Let's get into it. Let's look at some TikTok beauty hacks, but first, First of all, if you guys don't know who I am, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist and it is my goal here on YouTube to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at makeup. So if that sounds like something you would be interested in, then please consider subscribing. And when I say, you know, help you become as best that you can be at makeup, I kind of mean like separating what we see online versus what is kind of achievable and actually realistic in real life. Because sometimes what we see online may look amazing in front of all these lights, but when you get outside into the real world and you've baked a little bit too much, you know it's gonna look a little bit crusty. And some people say, well, there's no rules to makeup and that's absolutely fine. I would say there's no rules to creativity and individuality, but makeup most definitely has a theory. And these videos are to teach you that theory. And here's the thing, guys, when you learn like makeup theory or, or rules in a certain kind of artistic form, it doesn't mean you can't do other things. You can learn the rules, but learn the rules so you know how to break them properly. Okay. And I do just wanna say again, just before we get into it, I do appreciate everyone tagging me in things and sending me messages with all these videos. Please be respectful to the individual. It's okay to give constructive criticism about makeup, things like that. If you put yourself online like myself, I expect criticism back. However, what I don't expect to see is people tagging me in videos saying, look at this shit, isn't this crap, all that kind of stuff. I will never insult the person. I will never insult the individual. Constructive criticism. Got it? Because when you go out there and tag people and say things, you're representing me just as much as you're representing yourself. And I'm not into that. Okay, let's go. why that hack is a slight issue. The, all the things they mentioned at the beginning, like the string, the tape, are meant to be hacks that is gonna help you get a perfectly straight line. Then what they are fixing in this, I don't know what they're trying to fix because what they do is basically say, grab a brush and make a straight line because they've just turned that sponge into an applicator, which is too thick by the way. And then they're like, oh, and that should do it. No, the problem is the most difficult thing about winged liner is getting it symmetrical and having that perfect flick for most people. Some people are masters at it and they're just geniuses, you know? So that's not gonna help. One, because a sponge applicator is way too thick. You see when she applied it, it had that rounded edge. You want a pointed edge, you know? That's not gonna help anything. They've basically said, try this brush instead of this brush. They haven't actually given a way that you can um, get a really nice straight line. But basically what you want to do with a liquid liner, with um, any kind of liner, if you want that winged outlook, is follow your waterline. So your bottom waterline here, and you just want to carry on as if that waterline was to continue. So just if that was to carry on up. And the way to do it, I know a lot of people kind of struggle with it. You want to move as fast as you can. <laughs> if you kind of drag it out and feather it out, that's exactly what you're gonna end up with, like a feathery line. You kind of just want to go for it, that's my advice. <laughs> Grab a brush and just flick. 
see where it goes, see what happens. And then we can match up the other side. If you're better at one eye than the other, start with an eye that you are worst at. And then you can mimic that on the side you are better at because then you're more likely to be able to copy, if that makes sense. Um, I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'll do a video about it one day. All right, so you want to contour your nose without any failures? Let's go. First, you're going to need your bronzer. Take the bronzer on a brush and literally what you start doing is bronze your entire nose from tip all the way to the bridge. It's going to look like a mess right now, but trust me, we will pull through. Okay, now here's the trick. You take your face powder and a dry beauty blender and you're gonna snatch the sides. The more you bring this in, the smaller your nose is gonna look. So we're gonna make this as big as you like. Hmm? Like literally, look how small that looks already. Don't forget the bridge. Wanna make that nice and light as well. Boo! Take a big face, face breath, oh my god, English, what even is it? And start buffing all of this out until it's soft. Some highlighter to just the tip and the bridge, and you're done. So here's something to think about. I love Nikki, I think she's incredible. She's amazing at makeup, um, and she looks absolutely fantastic. Here's the deal. So here she's showing how to make your nose look incredibly small and like snatched, whatever. But listen, when we contour, right, we contour to change the structure of a certain part of our face. So that can be the structure of our nose, the structure of our cheeks, to make it bigger or smaller or more defined. So when you're restructuring things, you kind of have to consider how, um, how that looks in comparison to everything else. I've mentioned before, in, it was my Kylie Jenner reacts video. Everyone can contour their nose, not everyone has to. And contouring your nose doesn't really benefit everyone, especially when you make your nose too small for your face. And yes, that's a thing. <laughs> if you have a really small nose anyway, like Nikki does, by doing that, that method, you make your nose incredibly, incredibly small to a point where it just looks like this tiny line in the middle of a face, you know? Especially then if you're sculpting your cheekbones to make your cheekbones look bigger, you're adding highlighter to make your cheekbones look bigger, your lips are overdrawn, you have all these big um, parts of your face, and then you have this tiny, tiny, tiny nose in the middle. It looks out of balance and it looks out of sync with the rest of your face. Consider your whole face when you're contouring your nose. For example, a nose like mine, which is bigger from the front, from the side, I'm lucky I have a kind of like this kind of shape. But from the side, absolutely you can do that because my nose comes out here and dips in here and comes out here and comes out here. So to mimic a smaller nose on my face shape would be okay. Like you would have to be careful because it's quite a long nose and a long face. But on a, no on a face like Nikki's where she has really nice full lips, she has these amazing cheekbones, to then get this tiny little nose and go like, and put this tiny little nose in the middle, it looks a little bit strange. It looks like someone's pinched your face right in the middle. So when you're contouring anything in general, consider your whole face and how everything else measures up. Before I go into um, my like review of that, can we just take a look at my eyelids here? Listen, I've put concealer on my eyelids today because I'm not wearing eyeshadow and then I've set with a powder on top. This is why those creases through the eye socket is why I always say not to use concealer as an eyeshadow base if you have oily eyelids because that is some creasing going on. Anyway, hopefully I catch it and get rid of it in a minute. Okay, back to the video. Why do we always have to come up on social media with the newest way to do this? What's the easiest way to con- You know what's easier than drawing on your glasses and ruining that little plastic bit and making it all discolored? It's just to get a brush and go down the size of your nose. And especially those plastic bits, so they sit like this so they can sit comfortably on top of your nose. They're gonna go outwards so you're making your nose triangle. How is that? And that's not the first time I've seen that hack, by the way. That's been a few times. How is that easier in any way? And if we're talking practically, how the shape that will give your nose is going to make it triangle because it comes outwards. And you can see when she does on her nose, actually it comes out this way. Yeah. Yeah. No.
I'm in two minds about that one. Because imagine that first of all, again, let's talk about real lighting and real life. That's quite a drastic, intense, that's a drag queen nose. That's a nose, that's literally a drag queen method to make your nose look smaller because you're physically drawing a new nose onto your nose. <laughs> So yeah, it's a, good, it's a good way to do it. When you look at videos like this, here's what I'm gonna take from that video. When you look at videos like this, look at the shapes they're making and do it on a more muted kind of level. So don't go as hardcore in as they do with drawing these lines. Maybe take your contour powder and create that shape very lightly um, to mimic that shape. But um, it's a good shape and it's a good tip. Not as intense though. So I wanted to include this one in here because I've seen these products being used wrong so many times. People use them as color correctors, like color correcting concealers on the skin. So they will take the blue and put that all over the face for some reason before the foundation. They're mixing pigments, foundation mixing pigments. So exactly like this video, they are mixed in to neutralize or warm up or cool down or lighten or deepen foundation shades, they are not color correctors. Pure blue has no reason to be a color corrector straight on the skin. Um, yeah. It's a beautiful lip um, combination. Here's the thing with that whole lip sculpting situation. So yeah, draw your lip liner, that's cool. But this has happened, um, this was a trend a while back where people were like doing, drawing a darker line here and then doing darker lines here and here, and then completely covering up with lipstick. We can see in this video in particular that she goes over those like definitions that she's made and then it's completely gone. So what's the point in the first place? If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna sculpt the lip and add these points in, you're best off doing it at the last stage of the whole lip, before gloss, but at the last stage um, of everything. Like contouring, sometimes we contour under our foundation, but it isn't as obvious, if that makes sense. You do, you do it on top if you want an obvious sharp sculpt on the lips where product is colorful and a lot more full coverage, you can do that after, very gently, and then tap it in or blend it in with like a, a small brush. That way you'll benefit a lot more. Also, if you wanna make your lips bigger, it's a lot easier just to shade in the outside corners of your lips. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good tip, but in the right order, it would be better. Makeup hacks. Number uno, take some super glue and a smudge brush, rub some glue on the back of your hand, rub your brush, did I say super glue? I meant lash glue. Anyway, uh, rub your brush through it, pinch, and now you have a super thin brush to clean up your eyebrows with. <laughs> such, so I know many, many makeup artists who have two or three brushes in their brush kit and they have been glued together with the um, duo, duo glue, the, the transparent, this one. The one with the green, the green label one. It is so, so good. It's, it's a great, great tip um, at making really straight lines um, wherever under the brow to carve out brows to go around the lips. It's really good to tidy up lips as well. If your lipstick has smudge, you can get a bit of concealer and create that sharp line just to tidy up. It's a really, really good tip. I wouldn't take your favorite brush and do it because you can't really take you know the glue out again. Order like a cheap brush on Amazon, like a skinny one. And it does take a little while like to pinch it and let it dry, add like two or three layers. So it's a really good tip. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there. This is something I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot recently. So people were doing, people were getting it. People were getting like this really nice, tiny bit of concealer, tiny bit of concealer. And then they start to do this whole thing again. It was like, well, draw lows here and then just do a line here. But if we're looking at the face, there's actually a whole lot of concealer there. It doesn't lift one side exceptionally more than the other. And it looks like a line. 
there's like no blending. If you want to, if you really, really want to make a dramatic lift, it has to be done with highlight and contour. Because if you just highlight, it's just gonna be highlight and a solid line. That should be toned down a little bit and a little bit of contour. And there's this whole thing people are doing a little bit of concealer here, a little bit here. You're still adding the same amount of concealer, but in different places. For me, it's not strategic enough. Your highlight needs to be put in comparison to something to make it look like highlight. And when it's just against your bare skin, it's a little bit too much. There's no question I got a lot of acne. But the most commonly asked fucking question I receive is how do you cover that shit up? How do you make it look like you have none at all and no texture? I'm gonna show you how I cover it up with no texture, no flaws at all. You need three products and I'm gonna show you what they are. Start with a sticky serum to fill in your pores. I like either the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid or the Exuviance Radiance Serum. From there, you need to prep the surface of the skin. Apply a sticky primer. I like Milk Hydro Grip or the Ordinary High Adherence Primer. And finally, you need a pot concealer. It has to be a pot concealer, not a liquid. Pot concealers allow you to create sort of a spackle on the face that hides the texture and covers the acne, and it dries down. If you don't use all three products in the right sequence, it will not work. First, apply the serum. Apply the sticky primer. Now take the pot concealer and cover all the acne. Now let it sit for two minutes. Do not blend it. Right over with foundation. Sorry, did you say acne? Yeah, we don't know her. She's so incredible at makeup, this girl. I see her a lot. I get sent a lot of her videos. And it's always like, opinions on, on this. Her makeup first, or let me just say, her eye makeup is insane, beautiful. I might not be like, uh, you know, crazy about Instagram techniques and hacks, but I do love makeup and I do love a dra dramatic eye. Here's why what she says works. Primers are great, sticky primers in particular. And when she says sticky, it doesn't mean like, it's like it has a slight stickiness to it. It's nothing crazy. But pot concealers or concealers in pots or even like stick concealers, like the wind up stick ones, are have more coverage. That's just usually how it is because they are more solid and they have more coverage. If you leave any product on the skin for long enough, mainly so thicker concealers, they warm up to body temperature, making the product thicker and grip easier. So if I was to do this on somebody, I would do it maybe not as an intensely as she does where she kind of leaves it and then goes straight on top. I would personally blend it very, very slightly leave it for a while, pat it out with like a brush. And I don't mean on the blemish, like around the edges and then go on top with foundation. How she does it will work also if you want a full, full coverage. Products left on the skin warm and thicken. So if you do want extra coverage, if your concealer isn't giving you enough coverage, leave it on the skin for five minutes. Um, It's the best, best way to, to get a little bit of extra coverage. I can't, what? I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. What was that meant to be? I can't really give any. I, don't pinch your lips with tweezers. What was that? What was that meant? Hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me, guys. That was, um, that was that, that video. I just wanted to mention in this video as well, if you don't know already, me and my twin brother have a podcast. It's called The Double Cleanse Podcast. We were the number one podcast in fashion and something. <laughs> <laughs> and also number one in the arts on the podcast chart. So it's it's a, it's a good time. You can just search for The Double Cleanse on anything you listen to podcasts on. Please consider subscribing if you found this video entertaining or educational in any way. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Please remember you can send me videos, you can tag me in things. Please remember to be polite and respectful. I'm not here to insult people. This channel is all about education, not throwing shade or spilling tea. That's become very boring. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very soon.